and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the beautiful and talented Tando Tabodi. Hello. Uh, do, you, do you pay royalties to the guy that gave you, the, the listener that gave you that name? No, I, well, I don't know who he is, to oh, be you, honest. Oh, you don't know? No, oh. I, I, I can't remember his name. How did he give you that name, though? It's a cool name. It I was very it. random. I think he either like couldn't pronounce my surname and made a mistake, <laughs> but then it stuck. And then it just became a thing. Yeah, you're an MC, actress, model, TV, radio. What am I missing? What else? Club DJ. Club DJ. Businesswoman. Yeah. What haven't you done, dude? Sing. Thank God, because ah. I'm very bad at it. No wonder they say you must open up the industry. Because hey. <laughs> you're doing everything, bro. <laughs> Everyone must do whatever it is they want to do. <laughs> Dude, what happened with that? With that whole, uh, the whole tweet. I think for me, break it down for me for, for someone who doesn't know what happened. With okay, so what I saw was people coming at Pearl to see, yeah, for being the roast master for oh, okay. Comedy Central with AKA. Ooh, so I'm just dope. like, yeah, it's gonna be dope. Mm. And you know, people were. I mean, some comments were fair, mm. saying that you know, around the world, it's always been a comedian, but then we then get upset when South Africans aren't doing things differently. But when they do, then it's like, oh, but this is what the rest of the world is doing. Um, and then it's a, why her? Mm. You know, open up the industry. Like, my thing is, why are you bashing her? Mm. <laughs> she's, she's not the one that's going to give you the job. Mm. You're, or are you saying she must say no to the job in the hope that, I don't know, somebody up and coming. And chances are they approached her. Absolutely, they did. And she actually told me she turned it down a couple of times. um, Mainly because she said, I'm actually not a comedian. I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she changed her mind and she's doing it. So uh, for me, it was also a point where a lot of people come at me every time I do something. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, not her again. It's like, so what must I do? Like, must I stay at home and like be broke? (laughs) And because now I must, must, you know, let other kids. And uh, I think it was also misunderstood in, in saying, that everyone must kind of find ways to uplift themselves. I think it's very easy for us to make excuses for ourselves. And yes, there are going to be people who get in our way. There are going to be people that say no to you. I think anybody who's established in this industry, I'm sure you can relate, Mike G, that yeah. it's not an overnight success. No, no, no. There's a lot of hard work and that goes into it. Other than that, people are going to say no to you. Yeah, yeah. And the one way to not do it is to go on Twitter and bash the same people that you're trying to get you to to either hire you mm. or to tell you their journey. Yeah, so yeah. bashing a pearl, a me, yeah, so Lerato was in the mix. Uh, a couple of people were in the mix, but yeah. it's a case of, it's, it's, it's kind of, you're attacking the wrong people. Mm. And even if you attack the producers, it's not going to do you any justice. What was the tweet? What was the actual tweet that, that made everybody go crazy? Oh, I said, I'd be damned if I'm told to open up the industry. Everybody must open up the industry for themselves, just like everybody did. Don't let anybody tell you no. Yeah, which is true. Which like, is true. And a lot some, of people yeah, go ahead. want the fame and the glory without actually putting in the hard work, you know? And other than that, I think a lot of the time it's, it's more the journey than the destination, yeah. which is yeah, so yeah. beautiful. And I know that when you're in the journey, I mean, I'm in a new journey myself. And it's hella frustrating. Mm. And you're just like, when, when, how, why, why not me? When is my turn? Mm. It gets exhausting. It gets tired. But it's only the relentless, it's only the resilient that make it. And for somebody else to tell you otherwise, nobody is looking out for you. Mm. Nobody will but yourself. And I think it was just maybe a hard pull to swallow to hear somebody say, actually, do it yourself because no one's going to help you. But that's the unfortunate truth of life. And it's not to say we don't help each other out. But at the end of the day, it's up to you what you do. Yeah. I got a theory about you, right? Yeah. I think you do all these things, like TV, MCing, actress, model, whatever, all these things, because you're afraid of being alone. Of being? Alone. What does that mean? Alone? Like, like you keep yourself busy because you don't want to be alone. No, I completely disagree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Alone as in like lonely. No, as in like, you know, there's someone like, uh, if you don't like being by yourself, right, then you always have people at your house, like, you know, having yeah. a prize and because you don't want to be alone in, in your thoughts. And that's what I feel like. Like, no. I feel like you keep yourself busy because you're scared of being lonely. I don't know. Maybe you're right. But I, I've never thought of it that way. But, you know, how I think of it is I do all these things because I genuinely enjoy mm. the work that I do. 
also to be completely honest we work in an industry where we don't get the fat paychecks yeah. and you kind of have it's to not Hollywood. Di- no it's not Hollywood <laughs> you know if it were up to me I would shoot one movie every three months yeah. and then spend another three months on holiday yeah. or just traveling the world mm-hmm. but that's just not how you know life has panned out um, I have people I need to take care of yeah. so I need to work because uh, I know like when you have siblings especially if you're a middle child yeah then uh, I don't know if this is true with your mm. with your situation, but uh, middle children feel feel like they're neglected, mm. and then they find solace in something that makes them happy. You know what? I think that that might be where it originally mm. perhaps stemmed from, where I kind of did my own thing. Yeah, you, yeah. that's completely true. I completely did my own thing, yeah. uh, but I think it worked to my benefit at the end because. I was kind of left to fend for myself. So as to say, not that my parents deserted me, (laughs) but I, you know, I I was able to explore who I am, explore what I like and go after it. And, um, I fell in love with the different mediums that I now work in. And with all those mediums that you do, which one is your favorite? You wear so many hats, but which one's your favorite? Um, I don't think I want to present anymore. Okay. TV. Like TV presenting. I don't think I want to do that anymore. Um, I love radio. I fucking hate TV, bro. I mean, I love TV. I love acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm crazy about presenting. presenting. I know I can do it. And you do a good job. Eh? I know I did well. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I do, it doesn't, you know, when you do like a job and yeah. then it's just like, oh my God. It ignites your fire. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think radio and acting does that for me. Were you a coconut growing up? Because you speak very well for a I black... I speak very well. For a black person. No, actually, quite <laughs> the opposite. Hey? You're kidding. I swear to God. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in the hood. So I'm like born in Orlando West. I lived in Pretia Glen. Uh, I went to Mondio High School, which was predominantly black. Um, like literally my first interaction with you white... You went to Mondio? Yeah. Hey, you guys had some fine honeys, we did. bro. Well, fine honeys. Well, <laughs> this is also true. Um... My first interaction with white people uh. was probably at 5 FM. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, like proper interaction. Like like I'll have conversation with my colleagues and you know, like some say, Oh, I went to go sleep at Lucy's house. I never fucking slept oh, at Lucy's yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Never happened. Yeah, I did that a lot actually. You slept at Lucy's house. <laughs> <laughs> No, my best friend was actually Jewish. Okay. Yeah, Dean so you were the coconuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But my friends were like from the hood. So that's how I have the whole... Best of both worlds. Best of both. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So other than that, so your childhood growing up was dope, ne? I'm guessing. Um, Yeah, I had a good childhood, you Come know. from a well uh, family. A loving family. We um, like ever broke. You didn't have food one day. I wouldn't say broke to a point of no food. Mm. But... I, you know, it's like little things, um, like I remember, and I mean, it's small things that, you know, people have bigger problems, Yes, yes. but I remember thinking like now that I'm older, yeah. there's like a school, a high school I wanted to go to <laughs> and I took my niece to school and I was trying to register in a good school yeah. and I wish I could go back to grade seven so I can do high school all over again. Not that I hated my school. I loved my school, yeah. but I wanted to go to like a private school, like Kalani mm. school yeah. and all a semi, like Parktown girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, school fees then was like, what, maybe like a 6,000 rand. Were they? I Jeez. think so. Yeah. My mother couldn't afford that. Yeah. And, you know, I look back, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I think what my mom did do is shield us from a lot. Um, she quit her job. My mother was a receptionist at Revlon. Mm. Uh, and she took an early retrenchment in order to get me through varsity. That's crazy. Um, so, you know, small things like that. Um, and it's only really when you interact with your peers that you sort of realize that, hey, maybe we don't have money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, but yeah, it was when never, I went to Dean's house, yeah. I was like, okay, no, we yeah, don't we have broke. Money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's never quite outright, you yeah. know, because I think our parents tried to shield us from that. But when and you're young, man, and you're young, yeah. and but when you're at res and you know your friends are going shopping at like a Mr. Price, which is cheap, mm. but by your standards, you just don't have the money because your mom didn't give you the money. I actually wanted to study BCom accounting. Yeah. And then my mom took me to CA and I saw that you have to do like eight years. I was like, fuck this. To be a CA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, nah, hell no. Uh, how many years did you do? You got BCom, you got a degree, next? Yes. So yeah. I finished my degree. Um, was that for your mother or you really wanted no, to do No, I loved it. Mm. I loved accounting. Um, I don't regret the decision. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did it for myself. So you do your own books now? Pretty much. Is it? Yeah. So it's coming in handy. It is. And how was like varsity life? Were you like... Oh my gosh, amazing. Star of the show? Um, were you famous when you were in varsity? 
No. Oh. Um, I don't know. I mean, I had just started on My Perfect Family. Yeah, it was yeah. the very first season of My Perfect Family. I'd hardly say I was famous. Mm. Um, I was just a normal girl. I partied a lot. Yes. Where were you partying at those days? Roxy's was a thing. Hey, Roxy's was a yeah. thing. <laughs> um, it was also Transkai. Remember Transkai? Oh, yeah. um, we're revealing yeah. our <laughs> So I did a lot of that. We literally party. I was also, I, I was a, a spin agent. Ah. So we had lots of free liquor. Uh. Um, I, I'm going to be honest and say, I, I also spend most of my days at auditions mm. instead of class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd skip a lot of class, to be honest. Um, but I had great friends around me mm. who would let me know what was happening in class on that day. So when you go into these auditions and they turn you down, don't you feel like giving up? Be like, I should Never. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. I mean, there were days that were very difficult. And I remember there was a building, if you go to UJ, it's called B13. It's a very high building. It's the highest point in UJ. And I'd go up there at night and I'd literally scream at the sky with complete frustration but then i'd go back down and know that in life you can't try something and keep trying and then have it fail it's mm. literally impossible it's impossible actually yeah you're right so if i can try if i want to be a millionaire I keep on trying oh absolutely you, know? you can be whatever you want to be and you know people say that and it sounds like a cliche you're like oh yeah sure i can be whatever you want to be yeah. but genuinely if you if you if you keep Involving yeah, something. Yeah. There's absolutely no way. No way. So if I keep trying my chances with you, there's no uh, way. Ah, you see now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just said. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> yes. I mean, I've dated some guys where I look back, I'm just like, how on earth did that happen? And the thing is, they were resilient. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of study your subject, you figure out what you need to do, yeah. you know, how you approach it. And if you keep trying, it will work. But you're looking good, man. you got a glow Thank about you. you. Really? Is this like uh, I'm trying to get a boyfriend glow, I'm happy, I'm content being by myself? Glow. No. You know, initially I was like, oh, I'm happy and content about <laughs> being by myself. <laughs> but I lied. Yeah. Um, I no, thought I was. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this single thing. It's nice. No, it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. How long are you single for? It's now been eight months. Eight months. So you dated this guy for five years, right? So yeah. now you're going back into the whole dating game scene. How different was it, dude? To be honest, before this relationship, I was in another relationship. So I actually have not been single in my adult life. Mm. So it's, it's literally a mindfuck. It's weird. It's crazy. No? It's very weird. Because here's is someone that you used to do everything with yeah. and now they're gone. Yeah, and then you're by yourself and then there's load shedding and then now you're sitting in the dark and there's no one sitting with you. It's weird. But I mean, you get used to it. Have you tried the whole Tinder thing? No. Mm. I couldn't. Mm. You're too I, famous, no? Not that I'm too famous, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I could put my face on Tinder. Ne? They'd have me. So what dates are you going on now? Like, where do you meet guys? I don't. Um, I don't meet guys. Oh, shit. I forgot to tell everybody about the crazy story the last time I was with you. What happened? Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, dude, I felt like a superstar, bro, for the first time ever in my You're life. You're stupid. So let me break it down for you. I'll, I'll make it quick. So I was at a 947 staff function, right? Yeah. So we're getting drunk. There. You know, free alcohol. Yeah. yeah. So Mansi, who's a very good friend of yours, she's mm. like, hey, we're going to town. It's a birthday taboo. So I'm like, all right, cool. My wife's not here. Oh, my girlfriend's not here. I got a visa. Might as well. Mm. So we go to your house we're now walking there all these celebrities are there bruh <laughs> guys from missy dingo <laughs> generations i'm like hey, it's lit here and then all of a sudden all these buses all these vans <laughs> there's a van for your friends there's a van with Ciroc girls i mean that's it's not it's not what happens ordinarily it was my <laughs> birthday so wow. it, it's it's not i'm glad i came that night yeah, yeah yeah it was a good night and the craziest thing when we got to Tabu, there were people in the vip they had to move those people because they're like tundos here because <laughs> it's my birthday <laughs> Shit, man. I felt like a superstar that night. Me too. It was so crazy. I left <laughs> my car at your house for like two you days. You did. You did. You're and I was so man. mad. I was annoyed. like, when is my G <laughs> fetching his skorokoro? Because I cannot. But your weekends aren't always that crazy. No, man. no. Mm. No, that's definitely an exception. All right. So let's talk about your road to YFM. Because I know you were at UJ. You did campus radio. Yes. So how did you get into YFM? Into YFM? Mm. Oh, I had been trying to get into the Y Academy for like three years. And you got into YFM when I had left, ne? Uh, I yes, so you had just left. Mm. Um, I'd been trying to get into Y Academy. Mm. Uh, and all of them were leaving one by one. <laughs> I'm leaving, I'm going to Y Academy. 
literally i was just like why won't they accept my application yeah, yeah. everyone around me yeah. is being accepted but it's just not <laughs> happening to me i literally got so frustrated um but then i don't know and then i got a call from Dumelo Diaho, who was then program manager yeah, yeah. and she was like i like what you're doing i like what you sound like um come through this chat yeah. and yeah that's basically how i got into it len Muleko, the one i do the podcast with he mm. told me that he's the one who heard he he rang Dumel. He's like, yeah. "Yo, there's this girl at UJ. Yeah, Tando, you gotta listen to her. Yeah. So he feels like he he made you. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if he made me, uh, but I think yeah, I think it's it's important, and it's something I try to do on my own radio show, for example, where uh, or just even on platforms. You know, when someone is doing something really dope, like there's a guy who's selling acha, yeah. but the acha is the dopest acha you'll ever eat. Yeah. You know, so you know every time I can help the guy sell one more mm. tub of acha. I'm like, let's do it. And it's, you know, the world helps people who help themselves. For example, if I sat in my res room and said, oh, I wish I was on radio mm. um, versus hitting up campus radio yeah. where then Len could hear me exactly. and then Len could hit up Dumelo. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's, we don't live in isolation. So it's putting yourself out there. How long were you at Y for? I was at Y for three years. Three years? That's very yeah. short, right? Eh? Yeah, it is very short. I did... Um, I forgot what it was. Ground Zero. Ground Zero. Where you kind of get to do a show Ground once zero. a month. <laughs> like once a month, if you like, you do a radio show. And then eventually, I think all the guys from Ground Zero fell off. And then I got um, weekdays, 3 to 6. Ah, weekdays. That's drive time. No, 3 to 6 a.m. Oh, Gravia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I love that song. Oh, no, that song is crazy. I mean, you man. become friends with all the security guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the taxi drivers who wake up at four are your you BFFs. Yeah, I wow. did it for a whole year. Wow. Probably the hardest year of my life. <laughs> you have not lived until you have done a 3 to 6 a.m. Yeah. radio show. Yeah, it that's how you know this passion. And yes. Yeah. So that actually is what discerns those who want it and those who don't want yeah. it. Because that will test you. I remember, I mean, I didn't even have a car then, mm. right? And I was dating... A guy who would drop oh, by me the way, off. I'm see what she's driving now. My goodness, <laughs> fucking hell! You could pay off my whole house with that. Whatever. Car. <laughs> um, and there were days even when my mom would drive me to work, and she wouldn't have enough gas to drive back home and then come back. So she'd sleep in the car and wait for me to finish my radio show. Wow. Um, Your mom's a superstar. She is, she's my mom would amazing. never do that. <laughs> so it's hard. You wake up and you're crying because you're just like, why? Wow, but that's very like new school of your mother because like, you know, like old school parents, they're like, hey, what's entertainment? Yeah. You know, become a lawyer, become an accountant. Yeah. But the fact that she was with you and believed in you and was able to like sleep in the car yeah. while you're doing a show, that shows a lot. At right? that point, she really didn't have a choice because I'm like, this is my job. <laughs> <laughs> and then when does 5FM come ringing up? So 5FM, um, well, after 3 to 6, I did a 12 to 3 weekends. Because at the time, every DJ wanted to be at 5FM. Absolutely. Like, Yo. Uh, doesn't, don't they still? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, I did 12 to 3 and then I was offered... Um, I did 12 to 3 after 3 to 6 as well. Really? Weekends? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No, I did weekends. Week. Oh, okay. Cool. Then I was offered, uh, it was, I think, 10 to 12. It was just after Zamadube left. Mm. 10 to 12 slot the following year, but then I got hit up by uh, Grant. Grant Nash. Uh, no, I'm lying. Actually, it wasn't Grant at the time. It was Tim. Tim, Tim. Um, and they off wanted to offer me uh, to be a traffic presenter on Roger Good's show. Fuck that. Drive time. Fuck that. Versus 10 to 12 YFM. I said yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I that said yes. Because you're working with the legend, bro. Yes. Because I was like, I'm, I need to sit back mm. and watch. Mm. And then... Fuck, I love Roger Good. Man. I am obsessed. He's amazing. Um, so I spent a year just watching what he did. At the same time, I did a lot of stand-ins. Within a year, I was offered my own job. Isn't it funny now you're taking his job? Because I heard you're going to be doing breakfast. Who said that? Ah, rumor. Ah, People no, I'm not taking rumors. his job. I don't think I'm ready to take his job. I think he can keep his job. I've only been doing drive for a year. Please keep your job. So you're not take, planning on taking breakfast anytime soon? No. Mm. Um, I think radio, you need to pace yourself. You know, it's, yeah. it's not a race. Yeah, it's a marathon. Um, yeah, it's a marathon. And I'm enjoying, I mean, I've never really done a show for longer than a year yeah. in my entire 10 years of radio. It's sure, always man. been one year of this, one year of that. Yeah. So I've now come into a space where I'm trying to create something 
that will become memorable. Oh, dude, I fucking love your shit, yeah. by the way. Thank you. Oh, that um, ZZ guy. Yeah. Hey, he's funny, man. He is. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. He's an idiot. Like, when I listen to you guys, it just sounds like a bunch of friends having fun, you know? Yeah. And I think that's missing, really, which is why, like, your show is one of the only shows I can stomach. Like, oh, thank listen you. From the beginning. I'm sure you say that to everyone. Like, no, 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 I kid you not. <laughs> if it was shit, I'd tell you, it's crap. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Because I'd walk right up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then, so, if... For example, radio wise, yeah, nine four seven comes to you. Mm-hmm. Open blank check. They want you. Would you move right now? Depends what slot they give me. Mm. Or I don't know if I would do it right now. Yeah, like I said, it's a marathon. This thing because yeah. I see it as the natural A of Anele. In terms of your guys' industry, it's pretty much similar. What? Oh, your careers. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, she's she's fantastic. Um, but I think I still need to do this. Mm. I need to finish this. You know, you need to finish a chapter and you feel like, yeah, I know, Shab, we can close it. So if they come and they say, uh, come do another show. You no, 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 it's too soon. Mm. Do people ever compare you to Bonang? They used to mm. back in the day when I was at Y, mm. which was so shit because <laughs> I used to... Don't establish yourself. I'm like, guys... <laughs> Um, and I stood in for her radio show And then some people would think <laughs> That it's actually her And then sometimes I'm like Do you think I should just run with it? Like, <laughs> I'm like fuck that No I'm not running with it um, But it stopped over time It stopped It, it doesn't happen I, I mean I haven't heard it in years Yeah yeah I still don't get why And do you like uh, Have you ever met up with her? Have you, have you guys ever chilled? Are you guys close? I wouldn't say chilled I mean we see when we, It's a small industry So we see each other But Do you think she's threatened by you? I don't know. I don't. I don't live in. Her head. I don't know. I don't think so. She has no reason to be. I think there's enough room for everyone to yeah, the to do amazing. Enough. Also, I feel like this conversation only happens when it's women involved, which uh, gets to me. It's you know, it's like, oh, uh, do you think she hates you, or do you think she feels threatened? Uh, no one's asking you that about Mo Flavor, you know. <laughs> but so, I hate him, and he knows. No, you don't. You love him, <laughs> and you guys, you know, you grow together. And I think, um, and it's why, for example, that opened up the industry fights for Pearl to me was so important because I'm just like this industry is big enough for yeah. all of us. Yeah, the pie is big. The pie is big for everyone. So yeah. ha- it's not fair for anyone to shut down somebody else based on what they've been able to build. So is there someone in the industry where you look at them and you're like, hey, this is going to become, she's going to become a problem or he's going to become a problem. Like this guy's a threat or this girl's a threat. I wouldn't say a threat because a threat means you, you don't believe in yourself. Mm. I would say I look at people and I think, sure, this one is talented. Who's that? CZ James for one. Yeah. You know? So he came from Durban and I try and plug him Anyway, I can plug him mm. because his success would bring me the utmost joy. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, just getting him an agency or whatever it is, small things, or even if it's just advice, you yeah. know, and we do the same for, he does the same for me in whatever way he can. So I think he's one to look out for. Um, who else? Tusombedu. Who's that? She's an actress. Ah. She's incredible. She's mm. very talented. Um, and I think people didn't see her coming. But she's, she's amazing. And I, I, can't, I can't wait to see what else she has to offer. Are you related to Ayanda Tabete? No. No, ah. related. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Shit, man. But like, you got so much going on. So who runs? Do you have like a team? Or do you make all the decisions by yourself? Or <laughs> what's going on? What decisions? Like, if, would you do that Nomuzli campaign? If they approached you, would you no. have done it? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I also don't, we don't know her deal. We don't know. Yeah, but let's say they're coming to you. They're like, yo, listen, this is what we're doing. Would you do it? But what is, what, what is the deal? We don't know. Like, we can only speculate based on what you see on social media. You can say how it made you feel, but you can't, you can't judge her decision because you're not privy to all the information that was given to her. Mm. So who makes your decisions? I mean, I make my decisions. Mm. I have a team that help me make my decisions, but yeah. ultimately my gut and my God help me make my decisions. Your ex, was he your manager like through the whole time you're dating or that came about like in the relationship? How do you know about that? Yeah, I know all my shit, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, um, um, I mean, so I have a team yeah. outside of him yeah. at the time. 
which yeah. I still have. Okay. Um, so he 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 was great in an advisory role. So he'd he'd be amazing in advising whether this is a good decision or not a good decision, or give me a different perspective. Or it's nice to have people around you who are not um, yes men. So yes. Yes. Who don't agree to everything that you do or, or every decision you make or yeah. everything that you say, yeah. um, who are able to give you a different perspective. Yeah, look how they fucked up Kanye, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, no, he wasn't my manager in the formal way of a manager the whole time, no. Yeah. What happened to you guys? Did you, did you, did you cheat? No, I did, did not cheat. Did you catch you with Casper? What? <laughs> <laughs> Casper has a girlfriend. Stop it. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I did not cheat. Yeah. It was just one of those things. Did he cheat? Um, I don't want to talk about that. So that's you didn't? Okay. I don't know. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Why would anyone want to cheat on you, bro? Hey, man. Beyonce gets cheated on. Who am I? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. People. I don't know. Like uh, life you... happens. I, 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 I. Life happens. Life happens. When I see your booty on my time, I'm like, yo. You don't look at it like that. If only. You look at it with a brotherly love. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <wait. laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, yeah, have you dated anyone famous? No. You've never? No. You're lying. I swear Tando. to God. I've I never dated anyone. I had a rumor that anyone. you and Tolly B were vibing. Oh my God. <laughs> I was probably like 17. For real? No, not 17. Did you that would, Kelly? No, like, no, shame. I was not 17. Um, no, we were not dating, firstly. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I just admired him. Mm. Um, it was early days of why. Mm. But no, we did not date. Wow. And I was not 17. Did shame. you smash him though? No, we did not smash. So what were you guys doing? Cuddling, kissing? We weren't cuddling or kissing. So what were you doing? And like I said, I admired him. And he was a colleague and that's all it is. Uh, it was a you. stupid lie. It was a rumor. <laughs> it was dumb. I remember somebody saw us walking out of like a party. It was like some paparazzi shit. And then they took a picture. That time, I'm no one. I'm like, why the hell do you care? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. And what type of guy are you looking for right now? Are you looking at someone who's in the same caliber of status as you? Like someone who's famous What status? You? Like someone who's... How many followers do you have on, on, on Twitter? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Serious? I don't know off my head, no. Yeah. Um, I don't date for status. And a lot of... I, like, I, I think a lot of people presume that people are something based on what they think you are. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm, mm. So, like, for example, if I dated, like, I don't know, Mandla tomorrow, yeah. and Mandla was a gardener, mm. and I fell in love with Mandla, and Mandla and I did the red carpet together, and he wore a great suit, everyone would speculate that Mandla is a multi-billionaire, because 100%. obviously that's what she dates, yeah. which is so far from the truth. Um, I fall in love. Like, I'm a lover of what love. Is it? Like, so I... Much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I think um, I live up to my name in the yeah. sense that I, I really love love, but really, I mean, obviously I'm going to date somebody who I think is ambitious, somebody yeah. who, you know, has their life in some sort of order yeah. or getting their life in order, but has their mental headspace in the right position. Somebody who's a romantic, somebody who's very funny. I love mm. to laugh yeah, and I think I'm funny. Yeah, it sounds like sometimes. you're talking about me, you know? <laughs> so yeah, hopefully, uh, maybe I've met him uh, maybe I haven't. So, and it, but isn't it hard, like being as famous as you are, dating someone that's just ordinary? Because they never seem to understand. What do you mean, just ordinary? Like um, an ordinary guy would not understand why you have to do a shoot at, like, I don't know, why you have to travel so much, and you know, you kind of make as obviously much. Obviously, you want to date someone who also has their own life. Mm. You don't want someone who's now going to watch you every step and say, when are you coming back? You yeah. must have your own life in order. Yeah. And if you have your own life in order or you're busy with your own things and we both are busy with our own things and when we're not busy, we can come back. Oh, okay. Not someone who sits at home the whole day and waits for me to come back. That's not going to work. Oh, cool, man. Shit, we're almost out of time. But listen, because uh, you got a meeting. You're a busy, busy girl. What's the meeting for? Um, the meeting, I'm doing PR for something. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Do you have any, like, uh, aren't you, don't you have a TV show coming up soon? No. No, you don't, eh? No, I have a movie coming out. Oh, a movie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Lives Here. It comes out on the 29th of March. Is that your own movie or like? No, it's, it's not my own movie. Yeah. I exec produce. Oh, nice. Which is dope. What does that even mean, bro? It means I help out. <laughs> 
<laughs> in a nutshell. In, in a nutshell. I'm just like, mm. <laughs> no, man. Uh, it's sourcing. Uh, I mean, I got Ciroc involved in the movie as well. So it's sourcing different funding yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, what I love about you, is, which is what I'm learning to do, is you're focused. Yeah. And I remember when we were at your house, like, yo, Mac, you got to focus, man. You have to. You know? I, I feel like you live one life. Yeah. And if you can just dive in with all of you into that one thing and let that be your purpose, whatever your purpose is, yeah. and just be unforgivingly resilient yeah. and hungry. And I mean, you're so talented. Yeah, I, I try. <laughs> you try well to be talented. That's the thing. You don't even need to try because it just comes so naturally. But anyway, listen, uh, do you have any ambitions to like go overseas and do a trip? Yeah, there? absolutely. Because I'm thinking, what else can you do in SA, uh, That's bro? absolutely what I want to do. I'm not even going to. You know, at first I wanted it, but then I was scared to tell anyone because like you feel like, sometimes you feel like when you dream, like I remember back in the day when I'd tell my friends what I want to do. My one friend today told me, I literally thought you were crazy. Mm. Says you'd rock up at my house with a full face of makeup and no money and say, I need five rand for a taxi. Wow. And I'd be like, this girl is freaking crazy. Like, yeah. does she actually think this is going You've to work a taxi. out? What do you mean? <laughs> Babes, I know North and Brie, like the back of my hand. Hey, if only they knew. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> I mean, how else am I going to get to my auditions? I'm going to have to take a taxi. Yeah. And on days where I don't have money to take a taxi, take a walk. Oh, you come from, um, right? But um, what was I saying? Uh, overseas. Overseas. Mm. So, I, you know, at that point, you're scared to tell people because they laugh at you at the thought of what your dreams are because they think that's ridiculous. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Um, but uh, I have friends and peers. Like, I look at, like, a Casper. He's so, like, fearless. Like, some yeah. of the stuff that comes out of his yeah, mouth. That guy's a legend, bro. I'm just like... What? Like, <laughs> like yeah. I know I dream, mm, um, mm. but I'm just like, you can't say things like that out loud. Was this, was this during pillow talk? No, man, stop it. <laughs> it's never going to happen. It's never happened. He's yeah. literally like a brother to yeah. me. But um, when he speaks, then you get inspired as well. Like Absolutely. Maybe, you know? So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, he'll say things that just sound so crazy. Like I'm going to um, fill up the dome. Like I'm going to fill up the dome. Yeah. And, you, you know, you, you laugh and people laughed. And you just do. Yeah. And sometimes when you put it out there and when you say it out loud, you're already manifesting it, mm. you know? You're already saying to the universe, this is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a lot of the times when in your mind you live in your headspace where you're saying you can't, yeah. that's what the universe then also says. So says, what are okay. we doing, Tanda Tabudi? Where are we taking this brand? Um, I want to go to the UK or to the US. Ah. Um, I'm definitely focusing more on the acting thing. Mm. Um, and yeah, uh, a lot of the radio thing as well. Yeah, man. That sounds dope, man. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Shit. Okay, cool. So I got some quick fire questions before you leave, right? Yeah. Uh, just so we can have some fun. Uh, what is the biggest check you've ever received? Biggest check? Yeah. This rock check. How much is it? I'm in telling. Couple of, couple of zeros. Hundred thousands or? No, are you millions, mad? Millions. Absolutely. Shit, I've never gotten a million check, bro. How does that feel, bro? <laughs> I mean, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you open that thing from when you were taking a taxi and needing five rand. Dude, yeah. it's just all worth it at the end. How it's long is your it. Ciroc deal? Well, we've just renewed. So this is now the second year. Is, so we're doing two more years. I've always wondered, how do you get those deals, bro? They approach you. Mm. Um, I think it's a case of a brand seeing synergy in your brand and then you deciding if there's synergy in, in, in the in, brand. Yeah. And I think what works with Ciroc is that it's genuinely an authentic relationship True. where they're not saying, have you posted today? Mm. You know, it's, we kind of do as and when we want and we have fun with it. And because we're both very passionate about the brand and the brands are passionate about us, we invest in them, they invest in us. So it's, it's more of a collaboration than anything else. Tell me about your first job. Uh, I'm not talking about like in the industry, like a nine to five or a job that you've actually done before. Um, I, my first job, first, first one. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna. There's lots because I was working underage. I was underage and shouldn't be working. Hey, I think I was like, like doing 15. things underage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, when it's time about my first so called real job, yeah. I applied for a job on job whatever. Mm hmm. And I got the job. It was to, it said marketing. Mm. And I was super excited. It was in Randburg. I took a taxi to my first day at work. I was wearing a nice pencil skirt, some mm. heels, because I thought I was going to be in marketing. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, jump into the car. We're going to wherever. They drove me to Kailami. And you know those people who sell 
car polish at, yeah. the, at the parking lot. Was that you? That was the job. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I was just like, you know, if I knew that this is what I signed up for, I'd be fine. But you guys said marketing. <laughs> yeah. And this is not the marketing I'm trying to do. I cannot picture you <laughs> So I quit. I wasn't having it. I wasn't oh, having wow. it. Why, why did you do that job? Like, was, was the... The show hadn't started yet? Or like, what was going on at the time for you to do that job? I wanted money. Mm. I like money because I, I like, I like, I like to buy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like nice things. Yeah, yeah. And I'm unable to get it from someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want it to be my... A strong, independent woman. My money. Mm. I, and mm. I want to, I want to own it. I want to look at stuff and say, I did that. So since you're single, would you ever be a cougar? Like, Data no. No, 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 not enough. No, no I wouldn't it. have the patience. Mm. Yeah, I need. I I can't even date someone my age. It has to be somebody older. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But not yeah. too old, hey? Yeah. Like we cut it at thirty nine. Okay, I'm thirty two, so we're still fine. Okay. <laughs> I think you might fall under the too young category. Can you tell I'm auditioning for this? Yeah, so I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen. Uh, what's the one thing about you that you wish people focused on? My work, mm. just my work, because genuinely it's all I care about. Mm -hmm. It's all I care about. Um, and you're hard working, dude. I, I feel am. so lazy sitting next to you. Ah, oh, stop <laughs> it. You're so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's also not, you know, when you say hard working, it's mm. almost like it's painful. Mm. It's not painful. Mm. It's just work. It's, I like what I do. I love what but I do. But when you love what you do, it's not really work. No. Mm. Well, I mean, sometimes it is. Let's not lie. Hey? Mm. There's some days where I'm just like, I don't want to go to radio today. Yeah. I just don't feel like it. That's why we do podcasts. There we go. And you see, you kind of your own boss. You can decide when you want to do it, when you don't want to do it. I think, yeah, like work is hard. And there's yeah. some days that are easy and there's some days that are hard. What scares you the most? What scares me? Death, I think. Hey, death? Mm. Why? Not death, not my death. Mm, oh. Death around yeah. me or death of people I love. Yeah. I'm not afraid of yeah. personally dying. I am afraid of what my dying might do to my family, mm. but I'm, I'm not afraid of what happens to me. Yeah, because it's, it's always the people you leave behind that yeah. you the most. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I don't want anyone to leave me behind either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, best attribute you learned from your mom? Not to sleep in the car. <laughs> Uh, best attribute. She's just so. What's the word? I don't even know if there's a word for it. Mm. But so. Maybe it's resilience. Mm. Um, you know when when all the chips are down, when everything around you says no, yeah. and sh you still manage to say yes. Yes, yes. I don't that's know. That's a very strong trait. Eh? That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trait, it's I crazy. Mean, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think, I, I hope, I try to strive for that. And I know that she worries when I'm not okay. So then sometimes then I'm just okay because I don't want her to worry. Yeah. But she's literally a, a case of, it doesn't matter what's around me. When are we having kids? Because time is taking time. I time want to, hey? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm ready to have a child. I just need a... I just had one two years ago. So oh, I'm on fire. Yeah, I'm on fire. I won. I'm not shooting blanks. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can only listen to one song for the rest of your life. What song is it? Um, Juicy, B-I-G. Hey! <laughs> Fuck, I love that song. I can yeah. recite it word for word. Me That's, too. Why that song? Because I, 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 I resonate with it so much, and I think it's beautiful, and I think it's it's... I feel like that day, man, you know, mm. I feel like when he wrote it, he was just like, hey, yeah. like he couldn't even fucking believe it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. is this a thing? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of young people out there who are trying to make something of their lives yeah. and trying to be something. And every now and again, it's so nice to, to tell a story. And that's what Biggie did. He told a story. And I think in all of us sharing our stories, um, you're able to see yourself. Yeah. In someone's story, and yeah. you're able to hopefully see that there is light at the end of the t uh, of the tunnel. Because we live in a country where, you know, everyone is afraid, afraid of whether or not they will nah, be not something. Really. Not this new generation. This you new don't gener think so? Nah, this new generation is fucking shit up, dude. Why? Yo, they're crazy, dude. They're in like, what way? They spirited because there's so much um, technology and information out there that we weren't privy to 
back in our days. But that's what I'm saying. So I'm mm. saying that's an advantage they have, whether yeah. or not they recognize it or not is or another thing. It, yeah. Or utilize it. Yeah. But um, whether you utilize it or not, mm. it doesn't matter what resources you have or what your situation is. When you're not getting your way, it's frustrating for mm. anyone mm. with or without the resources that we had. But I think every now and again, it's important to remind people that it will be fine. Mm. And, and yes, I think they're afraid, even with the resources mm. that are out there, mm. even with the Twitters that are out there. And I think sometimes that, that fear is channeled wrong because of those resources mm. that they have. We had no one to vent to. No, no. <laughs> you no, don't, you no. can't vent to anyone, no. you know? Um, so like I said, your your just your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it is important that we all tell our stories so that, uh, you know, a young person who's watching this, who's out there, who's trying to make something of themselves is able to see themselves and able to recognize that yeah. it will be fine. So if my producer comes to you, he's like, yo, turn it to booty. I got this awesome song. I got in mind. You got to jump on it. You jump wouldn't. on it and do what? Like sing or rap? No, 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 no. You no, wouldn't. No, no, you wouldn't no, even no, think no. about it. No, 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 no. Why? You've done everything else. Uh-uh. <laughs> but I do things that I can do. I think you could kill it, I bro. can't look sing. At, look at Boiti. I mean, she can do it. Yeah? I can't do it. So I, you wouldn't even try? No. I would, I'm, I'm not interested. Ah, okay. I, I'm not a rapper or a singer. <laughs> I can't do it. I am not doing it. Uh, funniest thing you've read about yourself on the internet? I mean, there's been many. Mm. I mean, recently I learned that my mother worked at the SABC. <laughs> and that's how I got my job. <laughs> <laughs> um... But other than, there's been a few. Um, there's another one where, oh, my favorite bleaching of the skin. I think we're kind of over that now a bit. What, what, what happened? They, they said I bleached. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I bleached my skin. The latest one was that I drove to my ex's house yeah. and begged him for <laughs> forgiveness. Um, Why? Because you didn't cheat. I no no no. I begged for him for forgiveness because I overreacted by breaking up with him. Ah. Mm. Uh. And I and in that article they told me where he lives. <laughs> Apparently he lives in Hart de Beers, yeah, yeah. which I was not privy to. Yeah. He, was like, oh, he lives in Hart de Beers, and I went there. It's nice. <laughs> uh, it's always crazy when you see fake news, bro. Yeah, I think uh, the more they come out, though, the 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 better. It, is or easier it is to handle it. Because yeah. the first time, you literally want to die. Yeah, yeah, true. You're just true. like, this is not who I am. Why are they <laughs> making me this person? <laughs> and then after a while, you're like, okay, this is what they do. Yeah. It's fine. Tata Tabuti, thank you so much for hanging thank out you. with Thank you. This me, was man. fun. Yeah, this no, was we great. should do this more often. Yeah. yeah. I wish your radio show was this fun, you know? But I thought you'd like it. You know, give me. I'm just fucking with you. I hate this place. <laughs> this interview sucks. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, quickly, business-wise, what's going on with your Tana Tabuti? What's happening this year? What are the plans? Um, you got the movie out. You got the the movie show. comes out 29 March. Please go out and check it out. It's got a star-studded cast um, and some new faces as well, which everyone likes to see. Yeah. So go and check it out and support it. So how do you shoot the movie and do your radio show together? So I took leave ah. to do the movie. Oh. Uh, and Housekeeper is a drama series. I have to take actual leave. Mm. Um, it was shot in Durban though So there was a week Where I was doing my radio show From oh, Durban nice, nice. Um, So yes Movie 29th of March I've got my Tabooties range out It's available at Zando as well mm. um, Check it out It's underwear Shapewear Swimwear That's why I'm always naked And people are like Ooh put on some clothes I'm like how am I going To advertise my No products? we like it The more um, naked the better <laughs> Um, what else? Uh, radio show three to six, uh, weekdays on five FM. Breakfast soon. Uh, coming. <laughs> um, I think that's, oh, I'm nominated for SAFTA, oh, which yes, is really awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's weird how that never trends. Right? Uh, no, that will never trend. <laughs> <laughs> that won't trend. Yes. And, uh, then we can't talk about my mom. Yeah, yeah, who is yeah. the SABC. That's why I don't trend. <laughs> um, so please vote. Uh, I'm, I'm nominated in two categories, best TV presenter and, uh, best talk show for my show Tando Bears or which was on TLC. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And is the SAFTA, is that a big thing? For me, it's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, it's the Oscars of the country. Oh, nice. I've hosted them twice and oh. was not nominated. Yeah. So it's great to finally be nominated. Oh, nice. All yeah. right, cool. Tando to booty out of the building. Boom. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady and Len Moleko.